This is MySpace, and here is one of the men who founded it, Tom Anderson. How are you? Good to see you. Um, you are... You are much blonder in your profile pic. I think it's just a light computer screen, because my, my hair has not changed. I don't know. I've been hearing that all day today. And it was like, quite a minute. Tom, that, I mean, Tom has become... You have become this guy, in a way. I mean, <laughs> like, the, for people, we just sort of explain the, the, the beginning of MySpace. Mm. Uh, you becoming the poster child, how did that happen? It actually goes way back to Friendster. It's maybe this is like too boring of a story for TV, but there used to be this network where you know you didn't, you couldn't see people unless you had a friend. Right. And and Friendster was first, and we were trying to compete. So when people signed up, they wouldn't see anything. That's boring. So mm -hmm. I put myself as this person that could connect everyone else, so you'd see people right when you signed up. That was the idea. And uh, within a week, we couldn't handle the load of of. of Processing that network, so we just got rid of it. Now, how, how did word no start network. to get out? Like, what put the, what what got the word out for MySpace? Because it did happen pretty quickly. Yeah, I think a, a lot of people groups were just telling each other it was all you know sort of viral marketing from one friend to the next. So we tried some marketing in the beginning, but it just really didn't work. It was all about people telling other people. How many friends do you officially have now? I think we're up to 175 million for your official friends. Yeah, is that more or less than Dane Cook, the comedian? <laughs> but he's got about 1.7 million. So you certainly but he's, a lot more. Yeah, I mean, he's got more than anyone else that, you know, has a real profile. How many, and of, of, of obviously all those people who are on, um, who, are, who you're added to, how many do you, get to, do you get to meet? Do people recognize you? Do people walk up to you? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, not everyone, but um, I meet a lot of people every day, yeah. They go, do I know you from somewhere? Yeah, they do, yeah. You look, you look familiar. <laughs> uh, MySpace, as you know, changed pop culture. Yes. Like it did. Did you have an idea that that was going to happen? No, that's the one thing. People asked, did you know it was going to be big? And that was the plan. I mean, we were thinking very big, but sort of the way that it just became, you know, this thing that, that's cool for people and, and that there's music and film and, and fashion and all these things, I didn't really expect it. I'm not a cool guy. You know, I didn't expect that to happen. So I don't know how it happened. I went and saw a band on the weekend called Dame <laughs> that I saw because they MySpace linked me and the songs were amazing. Yeah. And it became a big part of that. And then, and then, um, and then you got a lot of money, man. You sold it to Fox. Yeah. Or to News Corp. <laughs> how did that whole, like, uh, how, when, when did you start to get the sense that this was going to happen? Did you always intend to sell it off? Like, sometimes people have startups and they, and they create this idea. They just know they're going to unload it eventually. Yeah, we thought that a media company would come and buy it someday. And, um, and we sort of, we wanted that, that, you know, the big money injection to help grow it, to make it international, and, and to pay for all the equipment in the beginning. So that was sort of the plan. And how the News Corp thing sort of come together? And it, that, it, we made a great choice, I think. You know, a lot of people were looking at buying it, and News Corp has been, I think, smart enough to let us continue to do what we do and really keep hands off, which is not typical for a big corporation like that. You sort of expect them to screw it up and sort of impose their will on it. And yeah, well, as soon as the news came out that, that, that News Corp and Fox had stepped in, people did think that's it, that's the end of the yeah. MySpace run. And I think that whenever, you know, other sites that, that I use, whenever they get bought, uh, everything is going to change. It's, they're going to ruin it, because typically they do. Talk about you, now there's a, there's a Canada page. Yeah. The Canada page is, uh, well, not just a page, but the whole yeah. site now has been translated into French for French-Canadian users, and we started to localize the content. So. You won't see all the American stuff anymore. You know, we'll have somebody here programming for music, film, fashion, video, comedians. So you'll get local stuff, and you'll get international stuff as well. But the idea is to to give people what they're interested in here. The um, the military story that came out, the Department of Defense sort of saying, "We, well, MySpace." We, I mean, think of how how high this has gone, where the, yeah, yeah. the American government is saying to the soldiers, "No more MySpace for right. you." And it's unfortunate, too. I, I don't know the whole story. I mean, I heard about it more from doing an inter interviews this morning. I hadn't, I hadn't seen it. But um, I do know, you know how many emails I get all the time from soldiers and family members saying that this is the way that they keep in contact while they're in Iraq or wherever they are. And uh, so it's unfortunate that that's happened. But now, when you, Did you have a target audience in mind when you, you guys set MySpace up? Um, I mean, we, we were 18 and up when we began, so, you know, we were thinking more 18 to 25, you know, younger people that had been online, but very quickly, mm -hmm. even younger people started showing up, so we lowered the age, you know, 17, 16 year olds, and then over time, um, more older people started showing up. So I've seen, you know, a, a granddaughter, the mother and the grandmother all on the site in one, you know, one little friend network and all the families talking to each other, so it's really not a site for kids anymore. When you, when you first got, I know that a lot of, initially when any time there's a, a, a site like this with social networking, there's a lot of people who have their natural safety concerns. Yeah. I mean, you know, the web is loaded with creepoids out there. Did right. you, when you started to get, become aware of how many younger people were involved, 
that is like, hey, we need to do something about this to prevent from right. you know, the predators? Yeah, when we began, it was 18 and up. It wasn't something we thought much about. But as the younger kids came in, we hired a chief security officer been with Microsoft for 10 years and it's sort of you know his business you know he'd done this forever and mm -hmm. started changing the privacy controls and started education programs and working with different organizations from parental organizations to law enforcement to sort of teach them about MySpace and how to use it safely and responsibly. Did you have any idea the music would do like the music to me is what makes I mean a lot of people are on Facebook now and other in other social networking sites and I think what really helped MySpace was the music angle. Yeah. Like, you know, Lily Allen and other artists, and even Dane Cook. I mean, yeah. Dane Cook ain't that funny, man. And a lot of people bought into Ooh. Dane Cook. <laughs> no, in fact, uh, ain't that funny, I'm giving him credit. Uh, I'm just saying, but MySpace is a huge thing for Dane Cook, yeah, like, yeah. and for a lot of these people. Yeah. Dane Cook was there from the beginning, and, and I was getting emails saying, because he was big before, but people would write to me and say, is this the real Dane Cook? And I, I didn't know, because I didn't know who he was. And then I found out, and, uh, but yeah, as he's grown to be the biggest user, his comedy album that came out sold. Almost, I think a million copies, and mm -hmm. however many it sold, it was the biggest album since 1973, Steve Martin, the biggest comedy album. So it well, but MySpace is directly a part of that. I think so. I think it had a big, big uh, component in the sales, and big yes. impact on the sales. I mean, earlier tonight in Toronto, there's a MySpace show. Yes. You have these secret shows thing going Billy on. Billy Talent, and I think if this show airs at 8 o'clock, yeah. if you run down there, you know, maybe there's a chance to still get in. But I know in the planning of the show, you guys were very careful about what bands you picked. You could have put a lot, uh, Billy Town are a successful band, yeah. but you could have gone even more successful. But, yeah. And I'm a fan of Billy Town, so I'm, I'm happy you picked them. Yeah. But it was important not to go too big. Yeah, I think we wanted something a little punk rock, you know, something very Canadian, you, you know, so that was part of the, part of the reasoning. What does the advent of Facebook mean? Um, it's obviously not nearly as popular right now as, as MySpace is, but it, it is picking up a little bit of steam. How do you guys deal with that? Yeah, I think um, Facebook is, is quite different. Um, you know, it's mostly people talking to each other that know each other, and MySpace has always been more open. You can set your MySpace so that you only talk to your friends. A lot of people don't even know that, but, um, you know, Facebook is more about who you know, and MySpace is more about, you know, meeting more people and the people you know, and you know, music and video and mm -hmm. all these different cultural aspects, so. Are you getting involved in politics too with Mark Burnett? Yes. What's going on with that? Well, we're working on a reality show. Um, it's sort of like uh, The Apprentice, but for politicians. So I think we'll start with people on a local level, you know, however they want to, you know, use the system and use the, the, the show to sort of build their political career. And we also launched uh, an impact channel, which is a place for nonprofits and all the do-gooders of the world to come together on MySpace and sort of show what they're about. And in that section, we have um, all the candidates from the presidential race in America. And they've all got profiles, and they're taking it seriously, yeah. fighting out, you know, in their friends list. It's amazing how, how much it, it has changed the way people can consume their media now, mm -hmm. something like this. And that, I guess, politics could find a real home on this. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, sort of at the last election in the States, they were saying that blogging was going to change everything, and it didn't really pan out. Um, but I think this, this time, I mean, a year and a half before the election or however far away it is, it's, you know, we've already got all the candidates, you know, on there and just trying to get something going. That's amazing. Thanks yeah. for coming in, man. Hey, thank it's you. It's really good to see you. Tom, right. everybody. He was my first friend on MySpace. Hey, you know what? Now I can actually say I know Tom as opposed to doing that. That's great. Tom Anderson, lots more to come on the show, including Michael Bublé. We'll be right back. Okay.